Hello, Rabbi. Good afternoon, Joe. Well, it's not afternoon. It's a starry, starry night, obviously. Good evening, Joe. I'm glad to talk with you. But that brings to mind the story of Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, depending upon how you pronounce it. Uh, and his life was seen by many to be a tragedy. And yet, at the same time, he's considered one of the greatest painters that ever lived. So is his life sad or happy? Did it end well or not? I mean, I know he killed himself, but at the same time, he created art that's enduring and admired to this day. What is it about life that makes us regret? Or is it a success or a failure? What is life? Well, what, you know, it's curious because you're raising a, a different topic about artists, whether it's musicians, plastic arts, or dancers. The number of creative individuals who had sad lives, committed suicide, lives ended in tragedy, were murdered, far exceeds the general population. So we may want to talk for a few minutes about creativity and what that does to a human being. And there aren't that many creative people whose lives we don't look at in some way and, and go, oh, that, they were so great. This was so wonderful. Why such tragedy? So I often wonder, Joe, is there something about the artist or being artistic in, in all aspects, not just music and not just paintings, but in all of them, that they're unhappy, sad, tragic? Or am I drawing a generalization that isn't true? Well, there's a certain tragedy to have being born with the desire to create art. I, I, I'm often asked, what's the, what's the, what do you need to be a great artist, whether it's a musician or a painter or something like that? And I always tell them, you have to be so desperate to create the artwork that no matter how many times people, you're a failure or it's no good, that you keep doing it. And that is actually very true, but at the same time, it doesn't make it less painful to have people tell you you stink, you should quit, and yet you still force yourself to keep going. Well, people tell that about my sermons. You know, they, they keep commenting and I keep preaching in spite of all the people telling me. But that's not the same as Van Gogh, as great artists. Uh, jazz musicians ODing and jazz musicians that stopped using and their music afterwards wasn't any good. So you begin to wonder something else besides what you're describing, this, besides the drive, the urge, is there something else about creativity that leads to a painful life? There's a great cartoon out there. Uh, I believe it was uh, done during, I can't remember which one of the Six Chicks comic strip. It shows, uh, uh, what's the what's the what's what's the same about chickens and cartoonists? Every day they push something amazing out of their ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the burden of creativity, the burden of doing something new that nobody else ever done, and it's self-imposed. There are people who will copy and who will steal ideas, and they know who they are. There, but they don't suffer for that. For the, but for the true artist who wants to do something great and original, it's, it's, there's a burden and a pressure to do that. And that burden or pressure takes its toll on the individual and whether it's in their private life. And again, there's something else. If we look at the private lives of diplomats, politicians that we admire and look up to, their private lives, I would not have wanted to live their private life, even though I grew up admiring them and thinking, gee, I wanna be just like, or I wanna follow in that person's footsteps. When you read their private life, you go, they sacrificed their private life for their vision. And in many ways they were torturing themselves and it was very painful and we only see the the outcome we see the product like the picture behind me uh, I, we know he had a tragic life but that doesn't affect my appreciation of his art and there's something about 
reaching deep down inside yourself and feeling that pain that sometimes generates a level of creativity. You know, artists must suffer is one of the great cliches. Right. But it's in a way true. And the, the worst part about it is that uh, the suffering is not always something that you can identify. I enjoy my art for itself and I enjoy my creativity for itself. But I know it's not easy. And it's there are definitely periods of my life where my mother who was an artist herself said, you know, you could be a doctor or a lawyer. Didn't your mother say you should have been a priest? Well, at one point, the, my dad said priesthood and my mother said priesthood, but they both sort of shied away from that. Um, after a while, they wanted me to have a real job, quote unquote. But channeling creativity is always a difficult challenge. Well, you just explained why you're not the world's greatest cartoonist. You haven't suffered enough. So maybe I could help you with your suffering and then you could become one of the world's great cartoonists. Well, I could drop a brick on my foot. Would that help? <laughs> but would it? Is that the kind of suffering? Isn't it more that internal state of wanting to create, wanting to get something out to the point that it hinders, destroys or affects everyday life and relationships. Look at relationships of artists with other human beings. Well, I have had the privilege of knowing some truly great cartoonists. Okay. Including at one point, uh, the what was almost universally considered the greatest cartoonist that of our century. Charles Schultz. No, no, not Charles Schultz. In fact, though, um, uh, Herblock and uh, Pat Oliphant and uh, Bill Watterson, who wrote, you know, political cartoons and uh, other things. And um, uh, the, uh, of course, the guy who draws uh, uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, a number of other very famous cartoonists all considered this young man. His name was um, Richard Thompson who I've known since we were both in high school, on and off. We were acquaintances, not close friends. Uh, uh, he was considered a genius by almost everyone who ever saw his work. He died young, relatively, of Parkinson's disease. So he had to give up drawing uh, about 10 nasty. years before. Yeah, what a yes. nasty. He was very unhappy. He was always very pleasant. He was always... Even when he was in a wheelchair and could barely talk, he was always smiling uh, and he was very positive, but his life was torture and I never knew him to be completely happy with his work. He would, we would always make arrangements to go to things and, and show up as a group and everybody would say, where's Richard and Richard? And we'd all say, he's home working because he doesn't like his latest cartoon and he's got to fix it. And so he was never happy with anything he ever drew to my best, to the best of my knowledge. In fact, if you look up his book, um, The Complete Richard Thompson, there are 12 sketches that he did of, I believe it was Franz Liszt. Uh, and the sketches are all virtually identical, except for very minor differences, but he kept reworking it because he wanted it to be perfect. And... Go ahead. Yeah, could, could that be one of the keys that in creativity is, and you're generating that unhappiness, it's never correct, it's never right. You're not getting out what you want. And so there's kind of a self-torture. Would I see the differences in the 12 drawings or would they all look the same to me? They would look very similar. You wouldn't be able to say, you might be able to tell the differences, but you wouldn't tell which one was better. Better, right. But that's driving oneself. Is that the hallmark? of the creative person, the note isn't right or the, the jazz riff isn't the one I'm hearing. And then- But is, is that bad or good? Is that something that we should try and cure people of? Well, oh, what you did not, was fine. Right, not, I'm not thinking of curing anybody of anything. I'm just looking at Van Gogh and others in terms of their suffering, in terms of their lives and that they contribute such beautiful things to our lives through their if, suffering. Yeah, but if Van Gogh lived longer, he could have painted more. If, uh, if Richard had not gotten sick, he would have 
his big regret when in his in his biography was that he had so many more stories to tell. And we want to look at the other prong, and that's when I didn't get something that someone else did, or I survived an accident and someone else didn't. We call that survivor guilt. And that may be the other side to this feeling, why do these bad things happen to me? Or why this particular thing? I think that may be worthy of our next subject, Joe. Okay, well, we'll have to do that. Meanwhile, thanks as always for your wisdom and observations and enjoy the uh, midnight sun or the uh, moon Sorry, and stars. Sorry, night or whatever, whatever <laughs> he had in mind. We both love this painting. Thank you, Joe.